We're looking at an intersection that's technically a four lag intersection, but it operates a little bit differently than a traditional four lag intersection because one of the access points on the east side of the intersection is a business access point, so the volumes are a little different. And we'll take a look at how to analyze this with critical lane analysis using the quick estimation method. So for, the, for this intersection, we're going to look at the peak hour data. The peak hour begins at 8 a.m. And we can see this in tabular form as well. And we're going to focus on the peak 15 minute period, which begins at 8.45 a.m. And you can notice the business access westbound has very low traffic volumes. Again, those are the, the vehicles that are accessing those businesses that are heading westbound. Um, and that's the east side of the approach. Starting with these volumes, our first step is to multiply by four to get the hourly equivalent of these peak 15 minute volumes. So we can go across the row, multiplying each of those values by four. And again, this is giving us an hourly equivalent. Next, we need to divide by adjustment factors for right turns and left turns. And we make this adjustment because there's an effect on the operations of the intersection, essentially, each right and left turning vehicle is affecting the operations more than a through movement. So these are relative to a through movement. And actually the right turn has a larger effect because typically with a right turn, a vehicle slows down more than with a left turn because there's usually a larger radius with the left turn. So we're dividing by 0.85 for the right turns and 0.95 for the left turns. So I'm gonna go across the row again, doing those divisions and we're going to end up with these volumes to take on to our next step. And our next step will be to divide by the number of lanes for per lane volumes. So we took the hourly equivalent volumes after we've adjusted them for left and right turn from the previous exercise. Now we're going to take a look at the lanes and we're going to divide by the number of lanes. And an interesting thing to point out is actually the zero here for the right turns on the southbound leg. And the reason why we have zero lanes is because there's actually a slip lane, so those right turns actually do not come through the signal. So those right turns aren't really affecting the operations of the signal. It, it's possible that they can, but in this exercise, given that it's a slip lane um, and those right turning vehicles should be through moving and not really affecting the signal at this location, there really isn't a lane there for them to operate in. We also have other shared lanes, and so we're gonna to need to combine those volumes for those. So on the southbound leg, we have nine turning left, 252 going through. Westbound, that's that business, it's only one shared lane, it's only eight vehicles, so this likely is not gonna be the critical movement, but we're still gonna carry it forward in our analysis. On the northbound approach, 17 left, 356 through, and actually it's a shared lane, so we would include the right turning vehicles, but there just weren't any in this 15 minute time period. And for the eastbound approach, there's a shared left and through, so we're gonna add those volumes together, 471, and then there's a right turn lane of 14. So looking at this intersection again, we can see we, all, we only have three signal head, signals at each approach. So we're going to assume this is just a two-phase signal. Essentially, the, the east and west goes together, and then the north and south goes together. The left turns are permissive, meaning the left turns will have to look for a gap in traffic. They're going to see the green ball, uh, and they're going to need to wait for a gap in order to make their turn. There's not any protected left turns at this intersection. So starting with these volumes, we have with our left turns, 17 and 9 are through movements, 252 and 356. The largest of that, the through, through and right shared going northbound is going to be our critical movement on this approach. Looking at east-west, we have 471 turning left, 14 going through, sorry, 14 going right, and 8 on the approach coming out of the business. So 471, that's the left turning movement on that approach is gonna be the critical movement. 
So we're gonna add those two together. 356 plus 471 gives us 827 vehicles per hour per lane. We're gonna divide that by 1530 and that gives us a volume to capacity ratio of 0.54. That's operating very well should be well under capacity and this signalized intersection should not be experiencing substantial delays or drivers at this intersection should not be experiencing substantial delays.